Put a part in. All right, right, here we go. Uh, welcome everybody, glad you could join us late in the day uh, for this little session. Um, I was asked a few weeks ago to come in and do a little talk about um, smartphone photography. And hopefully you guys will learn a little something today. Uh, it'll be a little bit of like, it's like actually a hands-on workshop is actually what it is, just so you have that understanding. So um, let's talk about a couple of things. Um, just make it kind of short. Uh, the interesting thing is about 10 years ago when you bought a phone, regardless if it was an Android or if it was uh, um, an iPhone, you bought it for a phone. Now, uh, when we talk about it, we talk about the camera. Uh, and I have to tell you, the camera has done a lot for marketing. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to always upgrade marketing, take better pictures and everything else. And that's why the ad always says, take them with an iPhone. But I've always found when people approach me and they look at my images, they say, well, how did you do that? Were you using Lightroom? Were you using Photoshop? I go, no, I was using this app called Snapseed. And it's a very simple app that you're going to learn today from me and Sean McDonald. And we're going to show you some tips and techniques. You'll notice in the chat room right now, there are the notes from today, which you can download. Uh, there's one that we're going to talk about briefly about lighting. Uh, there's accessories and there's all these little things that you probably do know or maybe don't know. And hopefully that today I'll be able to um, share a little bit of my insight of what I have learned as far as uh, the phone itself. So just kind of keep it in mind. Um, let me start by telling all you right now, all of you, please turn your phone on. That's the first thing you're going to need to do. Android and or iPhone. Okay. It's the first thing you're going to do. And as it said in the notes, you needed to download Snapseed. All right. So that's kind of a little bit important too, because we're going to go into this discussion, but let me introduce Sean McDonald right now. Sean, you want to say hello? Hey everybody. How you all doing? Uh, you want to tell them a little bit about you a little bit, a little bit. Uh, so I've been a part-time professor or instructor at uh, San Monica college for the last uh, 23 years, 22 years, something like that. Um, I can't remember exactly. Um, and I've seen the whole department change from before there was video in phones and before there was cameras in phones. Um, uh, we were originally an analog program back in the day and I've been there long enough to see us morph to where we are now. Um, so I've been there for a long time. I also work at another college, teach photography there too. So he was kind enough to come in because we've done this together. All right, let's talk about it. All right. So generally, uh, this is a tool. It is a tool and it is a very useful tool. And regardless of what um, you're using it for, uh, in the industry of commercial photography, it is used a lot to work with art directors. In the fashion industry, it's used a lot as far as showing costume designings and things like that. But I'll be honest with you, for me, I enjoyed as a, and I use the word as a tool that is fun. I use it to record information. That's what it's about. That's what photography is about. But we're going to talk a little bit about some of the basics and maybe some of these things you already know, and maybe some of them you do not. So I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to bring up this little handout. We're going to kind of go through some of the basics. You can download these and you can get a little deeper into it if you would like to. All right. Let me bring it up on the screen. We have people joining left and right. All right, here we go. Let me share screen with all of you. No, we don't need that. Wrong one. Hello. Here we go. Let me close this out and bring this up. Let's get up. It's not working my mouse. Give me a second. All right, let me do this really quick. Stop share and bring you guys back in. All right. Do you see this up on the screen, everyone? A little bit? Anybody give me a thumbs up? Yep. Thank you, Paige. All right, here we go. Introduction about this. All right, uh, the basics on how the phone works. You want to take it from here, Sean? You want to grab this part? Uh, sure, but you're sharing this, so I guess I won't share the phone then. Okay, um, want to scroll me down, Ed, because you <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, there are a bunch of default settings that you may or may not have known that you could actually set. So um, one of the things is when you open up the camera, you just open up the camera and it goes. Uh, but there are and there are some settings that you can actually set right there on the screen while you're using the camera. But there's also some settings that you should consider setting 
deeper in your camera and your phone for better features for your camera. So if Ed will scroll down a little bit more, I'll show you a couple more screenshots here. Um, yeah, and for some reason, um, one of our images didn't pop in here correctly and we've got the emergency SOS button on here, which a lot of you probably know how to do. Ed, you've gone too far. Can you go up a little bit? Uh, yeah. A little more? Yeah, so when you guys navigate through in your settings, uh, one of the things that you'll discover is that you can, you when you go in, um, your basic settings, you've got your display and brightness. Um, and a lot of the times we tend to set the phone uh, really bright, but sometimes that actually gives us a bad representation of what we're looking at because it's making it bright for us to look at, but the images may not look that great afterwards. So uh, sometimes it's recommended that you actually shoot around uh, with, the, with, the, with the slider for brightness at about 50 to 60%, somewhere around there. Um, obviously it doesn't show a number, so you just kind of slide it to the middle or just a little bit past middle. Um, but obviously in a bright, sunny day, you would probably be sliding a little bit brighter. So you have to keep that in mind. Now the phone camera does work completely automatically unless you start clicking buttons while you're shooting. Uh, it tends to basically shoot automatically. So it compensates for the scene. And then when it shows up on your screen, it does look fairly good. Um, unlike we would find with uh, DSLRs or other programs where we have to be a little bit conscious of being calibrated and stuff like that. Um, and then when you go deeper into the menu, you can actually find settings specifically for the camera. Now, when I go into the settings looking for things, you can scroll for 10 minutes trying to find something. But I like to use that search field at the very top and just type in what I'm looking for because um, that just speeds it up a little bit. So if you typed in camera, it should find the camera settings pretty quickly for you. Um, and then once the camera settings pop up, you can go in and you can set the different settings for this. Um, so it starts at the top and it talks about video. Um, I tend to set mine both at 1080p, 30 frames per second. Uh, and I like to do the slow motion at, um, scroll up the slow motion for my screenshot. Ed. Yeah, the um, at 120 frames a second. You can go higher than that if you want, but it will make a really large file if you're shooting video. Um, and that's only if you're doing slow motion. Um, and down below this, we have what's called scan for uh, QR codes, which if you set that up as you're using your camera, if you come across a QR code, it will find that QR code and it will link you to the website for whatever that purpose is. So that's another good setting to basically go ahead and do. Um, then there's also the, um, uh, scroll back up, Ed. There's some more things yeah. in that window up the top. I'm looking at the screen there. Um, you also have what's called the high dynamic range feature where when you're in that setting, you can click that box. And what it does is it will um, blend the best, but it will also, um, it will keep the original photo for you. So um, sometimes that's an important thing to do. Um, they've now updated it to be a smart HDR and it really does a, a fairly good job with that. But sometimes I find that when I'm shooting pictures of, I don't want it to actually adjust multiple shots. So that's kind of up to you on the um, on the HDR, and, and we're not going to really get down into the HDR today. Um, so that's that setting. Then um, let's go ahead. There's also the grid setting there, which is under composition. And if you turn that on, it will turn your view screen into a grid pattern with horizontal lines based on the idea of the concept of the rule of thirds, which is basically all two vertical lines and two horizontal lines that break the frame up into like a tic-tac-toe pattern to place objects for better compositional value. Um, so if you're looking at a scene, you can instead of placing things dead center, you can place it a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, using those lines as a guideline. And it also helps you when you're doing verticals and stuff like that too. So, uh, cause it works both horizontally and vertically. So I definitely want I recommend that you turn that on. Um, and then, um, so that's basically all the basic settings. There are some other settings in here because they have added other features since we did these screenshots about a year ago, maybe. Um, so when you guys look through those, um, we didn't talk about them, so we're not gonna talk about them. All righty. Um, so, Ed? All right, Thank you. let me bring this out. All right, so we really kind of wanna talk in a little bit more, a few other things that people always ask about well, what makes a really good photo. And Sean had mentioned to you, uh, it's about composition. And uh, that's something that obviously you have to develop over time. But one of the, one of the things I do wanna talk about is always the key time when you're going to be photographing your subjects. Now, just to give you just a little bit of an idea here, generally speaking, 
is that when you're going to be photographing uh, your friends or whatever you may be doing, family, whatever, even things of events at school, depending on the time frame, generally the best time to actually take your photographs generally will usually be early in the morning or later in the day. Now, I just want to make it very, very simple to you. In natural light, there are three types of lighting. And it's very simple to remember. There is front lighting, which is when the light is striking your subject evenly. And that's usually early in the morning or later in the day. And it has this beautiful covering of lighting on your subject. And it's sort of almost like a little bit of a built-in filter that sort of can take a little bit out the imperfections a little bit maybe in your subject. We call it suppressing. The other one that has a little bit more detail. Now, I should say I should go back. That front lighting has your best color saturation. It is beautiful. But when you're using lighting that's side lighting, that has more of a tendency of showing texture and depth. And then the last one is known as backlighting. Now there is a handout in there. There's like a little one that has a bunch of these. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later, but really what I wanna do is I wanna really get into showing you some of the features that are built in to Snapseed. Now, hopefully, if you have some questions, okay, uh, you can put it in the chat room and either Sean and I, whoever is not lecturing, we'll go in there and we'll sort of give you some tips and pointers. All right, so here's how it starts. Let me get my phone to switch out so I can put it on the screen. Uh, let's see, it's because, yes, of course, I got it. It's being recorded. All right, here we go. We are on multiple devices. Give me a second, everybody, so I can switch this over. I'm going to close this out. Give me a second. Sean, do you want to talk a little bit while I'm doing this? Uh, no. We already. Well, we, I love when you leave me hanging there, Ed. Um, well, no, no, I'm trying to get your. I'm trying to fix that other document for you, real quick, Ed. So. All right. Give a second, everybody. Share screen. Start broadcast. Let me bring this in. All right. It's, there's like five buttons for us to push to do this. There we go. Right, here we go. All right. So let me do this really quick. Ah, there I am. All right, here we go. Show. No device on audio. Right, Sean? Audio off? Uh, yeah, yeah. Keep it off. Turn it. It's on right now. Turn it off. Off. There you go. There we go. All right, here we go. Let me go into Snapseed. Here we go. All right, everybody. So let's start here. All right. I've already brought a photo in uh, from my, um, uh, basically my folders. Uh, this was an image that I shot very recently with available light, but nothing's been done to it at all. But there are some things that can be done. Now, the first thing I want all of you to do is that when you go into your tools, you will see these variety of tools here that are things that allow you, and I don't want to use the word manipulate it or to enhance it or to make it look a little better. And as you see up here, there's called tuning the image, there's a white balance, there's cropping, there's brushes, there's all of these features that allow you, if you want to, to make some corrections to your images. Now, I sort of, when I'm shooting my images, as I said to you earlier, I shoot either early in the morning or later in the day. That's just me. But I'm going to kind of show you what some of these features can do for you. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to take a look at this photo here of my neighbor's water lilies in her pond. And you're looking at it and you said, well, this looks kind of really nice. It does, but there's a few things that could be done to it. And so I'm gonna sort of show you some of the things that I will do to the photo and it's up to you. Sure, is it too dark? Is it too bright? But let me show you if I should say some techniques to enhance the photo to have more dynamic visual impact to someone who's looking at it. So. I'm gonna to explain to you a few things. There's also one sort of a quick one, which is called the looks. And these are filters you may be familiar with with other software, where it does something that enhances it. It makes it more contrasty. Maybe the colors are more vivid. Generally, I stay away from those. I do every photo individually. So I'm gonna go in and what I'm gonna do here, oh, we have people dropping in. No, 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 we don't need that. All right, so what we have is this. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to start and I'm going to walk you through what I'm going to do for this photo. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to vignette, and that's the word I use. Let me touch it right now. Oh, nope, 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 sorry. 
got ahead of myself. I got to use my finger. I'm going to vignette. And when that does, think of it this way, it darkens the colors or the corners. And what it does, it forces your eye to what you call your point of interest. Now, I'm going to take it away. You'll notice here, you can remove it or you can add it. So let me do this. Let me take it away. Now you see it without vignetting. Now I am going to vignette it. So let me go back in and I'm going to vignette. Now, what you can do, which is really remarkable, at the very top of the screen here, you can intensify it or you can lessen it, whichever way you would want. And let me show you this here. Now, a lot of times, oops, a lot of times what it'll do, it'll do it for you. See what's going on here, how it's changing so much. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit on my own here. Let me bring my other glasses in, my better ones, I should say. And so let me do this. You'll notice here, I'm going to diminish it a little bit. Here we go. And I'm going to darken it. There we go. I like that. That's for my taste. Now what I'm going to do is right here, this says that I want to put this in place with the image. It's there. I've done it. And I like it. Now, I want to show you another feature. When you go up to the top here, you can sit there and you can do this. You can undo it if you choose. You can revert or you can even look at what your edits are and you can take them away. That's what's beautiful about this. All right. So I think to myself, well, is there anything else I could do? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to try something. I'm going to do what is known as blur. Let's just see what this looks like. So what happens here is this. I go into lens blur and what it allows me to do, if I choose, I can blur out a certain area or areas in the image. So right here, right now, I'm gonna take, you can't see me doing this, but I'm taking my two thumbs and I'm kind of rotating it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to blur this even more. It'll allow me to, let's see, yes, a lot, like crazy. I'm gonna just do a really a lot. Now, I'm going to sit there and say, yeah, I do like this. All right, all right, blurred it. I, I kind of like it and I'm gonna let it go. Now what I'm gonna do is say, what else could I do to this? Well, can I make it a little darker or make it a little lighter? Sure, you have two options. You go in here to your tools, and you hit it. Now you can either tune the image here and do brightness, contrast or whatever, or if you would like to, let me come out, you can go into what we call the curves, which is right here. Now what happens by touching this dot here, watch what's gonna happen to my image. Lighter, a little darker. How much do I want? I kinda want it right about there. All right, now I hit the okay. Now the image is looking the way I would like it to look. It's ready. I'm done with it. I feel it's a, it's a nice image. Now this is what I'm going to do. We always do something which we call finishing out the photo. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this and I'm going to go down here to where you see frames and I'm going to hit it. All right, now I have framed the photo, but for me, I like it a little thinner. Now I should show you some of the other features they have. They have ones that sort of make it look like a Polaroid. They have one that sort of makes it a little bit of a sloppy sort of a photo uh, frame, uh, rounding out. They also have it in other colors, uh, but for myself, and this is just for me, I prefer myself, whoops, let me go back in. I actually prefer, just number 12, that is me. So now what I'm doing is this. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make it that thin. So you can see I made it very thin. It is now framed the photo and I think it looks pretty good. I'm done for now. So I hit okay. Now what you do is this. You go into your export and what you do is you hit it. Now I have an option. I can either share it with someone immediately if I so choose, or I can export a copy with the permanent. So I've done that. 
and now it's done. So now what you can do is that you can go into your I am or right from here, you can send it to someone. I do that many a times when I'm out in the field taking pictures. I want to send them to my friends and I do it immediately. So this is a complete photo. It is done. Now, mind you, again, it is up to you to sort of experiment. All right. Now, there is all these other things that allow you to either correct the exposure. You can rotate the photo. You can change the perspective. Uh, you can crop the photo. Sean's going to do a demo momentarily in black and white. And then I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an assignment that you're going to shoot. But you can make all of these adjustments here. But what I really suggest to all of you is you need to experiment. And remember, one of the things that you can do, all right, is this. You can sit there, and I'm going to do this right now. I can literally undo everything. Everything is gone and I'm back to square one. So this is what I suggest. Snapseed is a great software. It's a great app to use. I love it. Uh, everybody that I've shown, they really, really enjoy it. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to come out and I'm going to turn it over to Sean. Sean, are you going to show them one in black and white? Is that correct? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So let me do this. Let me stop. Sorry. I've got a, Now, Ed has suddenly disappeared on us. He's muted us. One moment. Sorry. Muted, Ed. I know. Hold on. Am I still muted? I mean, no, you're talking now. Hi, right, here we go. I'm going to stop sharing, and I am going to allow you to take over. All right, here we go. Let me come out. Give me a sec. All right. Sean, are you there? Yeah, I should be getting in. Hold on a second. I'm trying to see what's going on. Ed, I still see your screen. All right. Come out of here. How about now? I don't know. Well, you, you'd be seeing it. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry. We got to love Zoom at times, don't we? There we go. All right. I don't have technology. All right, so just like Ed, I have another image in here myself um, and you're looking at a shot. I'm gonna turn my screen horizontally. Um, so the, the phone, I don't know if you guys know this, you can do your phone vertically and you can do your phone horizontally. And one of the things as a compositional tip that I will throw out there immediately is too many people shoot too many vertical photographs or vertical video for that matter. So every once in a while, consider turning your phone horizontally. Um, also the new phones, if you have a, a, you know, a 10, 11, 12, um, they also have a lot more wide angle capability and stuff like that in their shooting. So anyways, but this image you're looking at there was, I think it was shot in an iPhone four, maybe an iPhone six. So I just had this image for a while, but I like this image. So anyways, um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and click the same thing that Ed clicked, which was the little pen. It opens up all the little options that are in here. Um, obviously I like this one that says grunge. If I was to click that, it would probably start playing some Nirvana or something. But anyways, I'll click black and white and it immediately throws it, the image into a black and white default. Um, and you've got some preset buttons. You can click for you know, like a neutral black and white, a contrasty, bright, dark. You can click one called film, which will add a kind of a noise look to it that may make it look like it's, it's got film grain. Uh, and then there's one called Darkened Sky, which would only work if this was like a landscape. So um, we'll start with the, um, the neutral and I'll show you some of the controls and then we can go back to uh, using the presets. Uh, a lot of the times with black and white, you run into images that just appear to appear um, kind of just like gray. So sometimes going into your contrast, um, if you click on contrast and then you slide left or right, you can add contrast to make it you know, a little bit more contrasty to your taste. Uh, you gotta be very careful not to go too far because too contrasty just kind of makes the image kind of look kind of blocky. Um, 
And then you can go in here, you can also choose to um, go to grain and you can add the grain yourself manually if you want to, which like I said, can make your image look like it's made out of film. Regrettably, it's not relating that great on the screen right now that you're looking at, but on my phone, it looks a lot better, but you can see how much noise it is adds in there and that kind of creates this old school like of shooting with 35 millimeter film um and then you have a brightness control this image had actually been too uh, a, a too um this image had been too bright you can actually pull it down a little bit i tend to like my images a little bit on the mood side if depending on what the image is uh for example when you shoot black and white in a nice bright sunny conditions uh you'll probably get some reality but sometimes when you shoot like i did in this photograph of what we call open shade you'll end up with soft muted tones and sometimes you definitely have to kick up the contrast to kind of get the image to look the way you want um but the presets are also pretty cool in here too so i'm going to go ahead and click out of there let's go back into black and white um the black and white presets that they have the dark one is a pretty good starting point for the image and then you can, once you do that, you can go in and, and see if you can add a little bit more. For example, in this case, the brightness actually was pretty good with what it did with a minus 20, but I'll go ahead and slide the contrast up a little bit, maybe taking it up to about, uh, let's see what it put me at, about 42. Um, and so that seems to be a fairly good looking image in my opinion. And once again, once you like it, you can go ahead and just click the checkbox and it now saves that setting. And once again, as Ed said, you can share this, put it in your Instagram feed, whatever you need to do. Um, I do like the way that this does work with black and white. It's quick and simple, and it does give good results. Um, and I've, I, in the past, I've also used the actual phone settings for this a little bit, but their settings are a little bit too extreme. They only seem to work every once in a great while. So that's that. Um, Ed, would you like me to cover um, a little bit on the like shooting with the camera and some exposure controls and stuff? I'll bring up another image and then we're going to have them do um, a little, a little hands-on demo. Go right ahead. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and pull up the camera itself. Um, and uh, we'll just take a look at, I have a scene here that actually kind of fits my, my aesthetic for black and white. So we just shoot this wood and this metal and this pegboard. So when you're in the camera mode, uh, one of the things you've got is if you go up to the top, press that little um, upward facing arrow and press it so it goes down, you'll notice that a few options open up at the bottom down there. Uh, one of the options is the um, where it says 4-3. It shoots a default in a 4-3 aspect ratio, which is you know basically like old school television aspect ratio. If you click on that, you can choose other. You can shoot in a more wide shot, like what they call 16 by 9. Um, or if you like to shoot in square and challenge yourself compositionally, a square is another way to go. So that's a feature that I'm a big fan of. I tend to shoot in square quite a lot with my phone. Um, but the other feature that's kind of cool in here is, and a lot of you guys probably know this, that if you press the screen at a certain point, it will actually give you this little yellow screen that's like an autofocus. And it says AEAF. And it'll do what's called automatic exposure lock and automatic focus lock. But also what's cool about that is while that's there, if you're clicking on it, you can also drag up and down and adjust your exposure. So you'll notice right there, as I'm dragging my finger down, I'm making it darker and or I can make it lighter. So that's another thing that's kind of cool. So you can actually choose where the camera's focusing, which is really important sometimes. Uh, the other feature that I really like on is when I go into this mode here, which is this little plus minus uh, with a circle around it. This actually allows you to adjust the exposure just by sliding left and right, because sometimes the scene is much brighter than you think it is. And so bringing down the exposure is kind of nice. And that would work really nice a lot of times when you're shooting black and white. A lot of times black and white tends to look a little bit better, darker than lighter. Um, doesn't mean you can't have what's called a high key photograph, a really bright photograph, but sometimes a darker is a better choice. So those are the kind of the ways I like to use the, the phone as a get go. Uh, once I take a shot, then I can go in and once it's done, then I might go in and click the edit and play around with, with the edit controls in here. Um, you've got exposure, brilliance, you know, with these sliders, they can change like the appearance of things. Um, brilliance works a little bit more on the um, kind of on the, the tonality side. The, once again, the exposure, I can play around with that. Um, this is the highlights where I can bring down all the bright areas. You gotta be careful though. You notice how the wood's starting to turn yellow. So you gotta be, you gotta use these with just a little bit of a light-handed touch. You have contrast again, so I can make this a little bit contrastier. 
Um, I can pull down the brightness. And then if I wanted to, at this point, I can click in and now I can see what the, like the default black and white might look like, which is mono. They have one called um, silver tone and then they have one called noir. Um, I do find occasionally noir does appear to work for some images, but in my personal opinion, um, I like to actually use Snapseed to get a little bit better results. Um, so anyways, click, boom, we're done. And of course, as you guys know, if you click edit at any time, you can click this red reverse, and it always takes it right back to where you had the photograph before you adjusted it. So if at any point you don't like it. So Ed, you need me to give you back control? Uh, yeah, because I want to see if we can get them to do a little a little something here. All right, let's All right. go into the grid. If you're out, if you hit click, if you Ed, if you click share screen, you'll just I think you'll bounce me. I'm gonna bounce you. All right, here we yeah. go. Well, I don't think so. No, you're yeah, here. you were there. there. You just had it. You're gonna stay like that. All right, here we go. All right, everybody, ready to try something? Paige, you guys ready to give it a try? Let's give it a little experiment. All right, guys, so let's do this. Let me, uh, let me get the gallery up so I can see all of you. All right, everybody, so what I want you to do, you have two choices. You can either take a picture right now, if you like to, with your uh, smartphone, if you'd like to, it doesn't matter, anything. Or go in right now to your photos, look at them. Now, you have to have Snapseed open, and it'll say open from your camera or from this device. And go in there and put a heart on the photo that you like. That's the first thing I would like all of you to do. All right? All right. I'll wait just about a minute and then we'll kind of walk through this a little bit. Oh, I have a meowing cat. Sorry about that. All right, guys have your photo. All right, here we go. So what I like you to do is this. Now what I want you to use, I want you to open up. I sh Sean, should I, I should put it on the screen, right? Walk it through. I think so. So you'll hear my audio. Here we go. Let me go back into my Zoom. Yes, sorry, I just realized I didn't mute my screen. Sorry for eating my salad. All right, here we go. Oh. Let me turn my sound down. All right, let me get my phone back on there. Hold on, Sean, I don't have my phone there. Let's see. Come on. All right. All right, here we go. Let me get back in there. Hold on. Start broadcast. I'm gonna be on with you guys in one. All right, here we go. Good, here we go. Keep popping in. Sorry guys, it's all part of the entertainment. Hold on. All right, here we go. All right, off. Give me a sec. I think you guys don't see me. All right. So let me bring this picture up. All right, everybody. So, oh, look who it is. It's Lori Ivis, Latanya Lewis, and Jenna Gossman from Career Counseling. Oh, my God. I can't believe this photo is here. Do you guys see it on the screen? Sean, is it there? Mr. Yes. Richard? All right, here we go, guys. So you brought your photo in, right? All right, so the first thing you want to do, here's the step-by-step. -step. First thing I always do is that I usually, a lot of times, I'm going to crop. And this is what I'm going to do. I always figure that sometimes there's elements within the viewfinder that I don't really want. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to go to crop. So I want all of you to go in right now and hit the crop button. Now what you're going to see is this, you're gonna see that grid. Now, I generally do it freehand. Now, mind you, those of you that do Instagram, remember what they do to your photos, they make them square, correct? So you may wanna consider by doing yours square through Snapseed, so you do all the cropping, not letting someone like Instagram crop for you. But for this shot in particular, what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna do free. Now, when I do the free, what happens is it allows me to do what I want as far as cropping. So watch what I'm gonna do. And I want you guys to do it on your photo. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. 
just a little bit. I drop the top down a little bit there, and I'm going to go good. Try it. Let's let's crop the photo if you guys could do that. All right. I'll give you guys a little bit of time. All right. Now, this was an overcast day. I was down in Laguna Beach with um, for an event with a photographer named Matthew Ralston, and it was not the best weather, but it was it was okay. So I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe I can sort of warm it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my tools. I'm going to go to my white balance. And this allows you, if I need to, I can warm it up or make it a little bit colder. I got to put my other glasses on. Give me a second because of the light. Give me a second. Long glasses. So I'm going to change what we call the temperature. And of course, I have to do this myself. All right. Yeah, I got a little bit of minus eight there, and it does look a little bit better. Now, mind you, you have to take this into consideration for some of you if you're shooting under different lighting conditions, fluorescent, incandescent, a neon, or whatever. And this will correct, if I'll use the word, the discoloration of, uh, say, whatever your subject will be. All right, so I've done that. All right, so all of you, if you want to correct your white balance, go ahead. If you don't want to and you like the way it is, fine. Let's look at our exposure. So let me go into tools. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into tune the image. Now, it's up to me and it's up to you. Do we want to make it a little brighter? Do we want to make it a little bit darker? So I'm going to go in and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to see, do I want to make it a little brighter? Or do I want to make it, uh, that's, that's a little too much for me, mind you. A little less, a little less, a little less for me. All right, all right, good, locked it in. All right, now I've got that set. Now comes the part, do you wanna change things up? Do you wanna blur the background? Now remember, when you're using blur, what you have to do is that, whoops, I don't want that. I need to go back to my photo. Wait a minute, back into here, sorry about that. What I want to do is this. I, I usually don't do this. I'll put it on Jenna's face. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to blur the background because I'm saying to myself, ah, it looks a little bit distracting. And I'm going to really push it. Whoops, I don't want that again. Come back. And I may move it down a little bit. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to hit save. Now, all of you can try that right now. Give it a try. So you notice here that the background's knocked out a little bit out of focus. All right. Okay. All right. If you think your, your photo is done, now what you can do is this. You can frame it. So what you'll do is you'll go into your tools, all of you, and you can frame it out. But you know what I just thought of? Wait a minute. What about vignetting? Should I even vignette it? Uh, let me do a little bit less. There we go. It's kind of created a better mood for me. Now I'm going to go back into what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I am going to frame it out. All right, here we go. Let me frame it. Uh, 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 frame it and it's done. Now, you can send it to someone or you can save it to export later. Now, let me show you, even though this is from the previous photo, what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to undo everything. And I'd shown you earlier that they have sort of this setting where I'm gonna undo everything. And this is the original photo. Let me keep going and revert back to what it was. There's my original. Now what I'm gonna do is this. This is that sort of feature I said, if you wanted to, you could change the appearance a little bit. I can pop them, as they call it. I can smooth it out if I choose. Or if it's a sequence of the same photo that you're sort of using for say a series of images, you can go into your last edit and it'll do it immediately for you. So if you have a group of friends 
and you've done a series of them, or maybe it's an event at the college, instead of having to do every one of them the same way, what you can do is do last edits, last edits. So let's do this, let's export it. So now when you do this, you can also save the copy. And again, there are changes that you can do as I'm doing right now. And it's done. So I have the option, which I won't do right now. I could send it right now to Latanya, to Jenna and Lori right now, and all three of them will get the image, okay? I'll do this briefly. I am gonna go to the chat room. Are there, let me do this really quick. Let me come out of this. Are there any questions, anybody at all? Let me do this really quick. Let me close out. Let me stop sharing this. Let me get myself in. Hold on. Sean, am I up on the screen, sir? I should be. Sean, am I up? Like, look, looks like, no, you're, um, I turned off your video. Okay. Because uh, just to make sure your bandwidth is strong. Okay, am I okay right now? Uh, you're, we just see, now there you, see. you are. There, there you are. All right. All right. I know, I know we have these screens. Does anybody want to share a photo with us at all? Kind of show us what they may have done. Anyone? I will if I can. Okay, Denise, sure. I don't know. Wait. Let me give you share screen access. Give me a oh, wait. I it's going to take me a few minutes, though. Okay. Hang on a second. Okay. I'm not there yet. Let's, let's talk about um, a few things. And when you guys are getting it queued up, Hello, Lisa. Um, what it is, is that, um, let me talk about some things called accessories. Hold on a second. We have a question from Rebecca. Yes, Rebecca. Yeah, hi. I thought you said to put a heart on the picture and I didn't find the heart. How do you put the heart into the picture? When you're in your, um, your files of photos, a lot of times that when you're scrolling through, uh, there might be, it could be a heart or a little icon. And what right. that is, Rebecca, it's a little indicator that lets you know that's the one that you want to take into um, Snapseed. If not, you'll be going through hundreds, if not thousands of photos. Now, again, when you're using that, <clears throat> sometimes what happens is, which is nice. Ed? Yes, Sean? Ed, 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 just pause for a second. So Rebecca, he's talking about a feature that's actually in the camera, like right if you take the photograph yeah. and then you're going to review it in the camera before you go to Snapseed, that's where you'll find the little heart button to save it. And then that way it'll help you find them quicker when you want to go over to Snapseed. That's okay, so. Just, yeah, it's not a Snapseed feature. It's actually the phone feature. Thank you, Sean. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, while you guys are doing that, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to uh, bring up on the screen, accessory. There's always accessories. Uh, there's always these things that you kind of um, want to buy. Uh, but let me do this quickly. Let me see, make sure I have my light on, which I do. Um, people always ask me a lot, well, what's the lighting you're using on yourself? And what I'm using is I'm using sort of, I'll use a word, a blend of natural light and I'm using a ring light. I'm using a, a ring light. And so um, I want to share some with you. I know for a lot of you probably have been using ring lights. Uh, they are what we call a, a, a source of light that helps. Yes, it's almost like what we call front lighting, which makes us all look much better at 8 a.m. in the morning, of course. And so um, it's some of those things I'm going to show you, but I want to show you some of these little extra features or accessories that you can buy. Uh, let me bring it up on the screen first. Let me see, it should be right here. Accessories, let me bring this up real quick. All right, do we see it on the screen, anyone? Sean? Uh, is, yes, Ted, you're on the screen. Uh, is, the, is the handout up on the screen, sir? The one for accessories? Let me bring uh, No, you put up, uh, it was just, that was just your screen itself you got to double click the actual document sorry about that here we go let me share screen thank you sir there it is is it up now it should be it takes a second there we go all right so um lenses yes so i know for a lot of you when you've started buying the 10 the x xr the 11 the 11 pro the 12 pro and so forth they came with lenses 
Well, um, there is a company in particular, and they are called Moment. Um, I've used their lenses, and these are lenses that actually attach on to your 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 camera, and they're amazing. Um, they do come with a price tag, uh, but they do allow you to do a lot of the features that the iPhone camera cannot do, such as macro, things like that, those things that you want to get really, really close. Or, yes, I know there are ones that are ultra wide, but, oops, did we lose it again, Sean? Is it there, Sean, or did it go out? You got bounced somehow, Ed? I sure did. I'm going to come back in, and I'll bring it back in. Here we go. Is it back up on the screen, Sean? It is, Ed. Here we go. So these are lenses. There's also a company called Oloclip. Now, the only drawback is if you were to purchase the lens, you have to also purchase the case that is designated for your camera. All right. They clip on. Some of them slip on. But they're remarkable and they're amazing. But I want to add, if you're thinking about this, make sure that the lens that you purchase is compatible to your smartphone. It's very important that you do it because it's not only going to be what we call the case, it's how it mounts up, but they work really well, okay? All right, let me kind of move on in this a little bit. Uh, Sean, you wanna talk about waterproof cases? Um, well, one of the things we've, we've luxury have gotten is now the phones are actually coming in a waterproof format. Um, for example, the 11 and the 12 both have the capability of being dropped into a pond or worst case, your toilet um, and can uh, hopefully hold up. They, I guess it's up to about three feet and in some cases up to six feet. Um, but if you want to go deeper than that, underwater photography and stuff like that, you want to take a look at some of the underwater cases that are out there. Um, I used to use the life proof cases and I really liked them. Um, they were really good for the waterproof capabilities, but as an everyday case, they tended to get beat up and you run the risk of them wearing out. Like they have little seals that go all the way around and little doors that open up that seal. And if you damn it, and, and even the cover for the lenses. And the problem is if you use it as an everyday phone, those seals will wear out. So if you are gonna be using these in an underwater type of uh, application, you want to use a case specifically for that and then have an everyday case instead, like an OtterBox case like Ed and I use. Um, OtterBox makes really good rugged cases as Ed is swiping down here. Um, and there are companies out there. You don't have to go with the brand we say. What you want to do is definitely look at the reviews of what the people say about them. Um, I know there's Urban Armor and a couple other companies that make really heavy duty armored cases. There's also some sort of a military spec for drop. Um, which talks about how, how far up you can drop it, and whether or not it's going to break the case or whatever. Um, I've been very lucky. I've only cracked one screen over the years. And I think that was a sit issue. Um, and so, and I've never cracked one from, from actually dropping it because I've always had cases with covers on them or glass protection and stuff like that. So you always want to about that type of thing. Um, and if, sometimes if you buy your cases, when you buy your phone, sometimes if you buy like at the AT&T store or someplace like that. Sometimes they have a deal where if you buy the case, they give you like 20% off when you're buying it. And they also guarantee the case for a fixed amount of time, which means that if the case gets damaged, sometimes you can exchange it. Look into that. I don't know if they're doing that, those types of deals right now, but I know every once in a while those deals do pop up. Um, now Ed's displaying a tripod uh, that I really actually think is a great little tripod. I actually have one right here in front of me. Um, it's made by uh, Manfrotto. Um, it's not a big extendable tripod that'll get you up to eyesight level. What it is is considered a tabletop one and you can buy, um, it comes with an iPhone adapter that goes on top that allows you to connect your phone to that. And then that will allow you to thread it onto the bottom. I'm sorry, my picture's not showing. There we go. Allows you to thread it on the bottom. I currently don't have my adapter out here. I just happen to have this right nearby. Um, it's a great little tripod. It doesn't allow you to flip from vertical to horizontal so that, that you would have to do with the holder itself. Um, but a lot of the times it allows you to definitely angle down and angle up and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool little tripod. It also can double as a hand holder. Like if you want to have your camera be a little bit more stable than trying to hold it like this and covering up your lens with your finger, you can actually hold it with, with this down here and allows you to kind of hold it in a form factor. It's something like I'm doing with my hand right here. 
So it allows you to hold it and then you, you can just have your, your volume buttons right there. So you can push the button, take the, take the picture. Just be careful not to cover your lens again. So you wanna make sure you do that. So anyways, Ed. Oh yeah, the adapters. There's a variety of different adapters out there. I would go with the ones that most people have seemed to be talking about. This is one made by Joby or Joby. Um, they're the people who make those flexible, bendable tripods, and those are also really good. But they make a really good. And we, yeah, there we can barely see it. There it is. Ed's holding up a Joby right there. Um, the Jobies, um, they're they make a really good phone holder. So does Manfrotto and a couple other companies. Some of those phone holders are really um, chintzy, which means they're really poorly made and they tend to break. Or sometimes they don't hold your phone because they were designed for like an iPhone four or five. So you want to make sure that when you're buying it, it currently works with your phone um, and it, it, and make sure it's, you know, and, and sometimes like I said, reviews are work great and stuff like that. Remote releases that are a Bluetooth device are great. There's a ton of them out there. Some can just connect right to your keychain, So you always have it with you. Um, they use a little button battery and their Bluetooth and they just allow you to fire the camera. Some of the, um, when you buy the grips to just hold your phone, some of them have like a stabilizer type feature. And some of those actually have a button that's built in that will also fire it. I know selfie sticks also used to have, or do have that. I don't know if people are still using selfie sticks ever since they banned them at Disneyland. But anyways, but selfie sticks also allow sometimes because the phone will be way up here. They'll have a, a Bluetooth feature, which is a button that you push right here. Downside is a lot of times those don't have your ability to put AA batteries in them. You have to actually charge them. So you have to keep and remember to charge the devices. Um, sometimes batteries, old school batteries are a good thing. Anyway, Ed will scroll through this list some more. Yeah, once again, other, other grips. This is one that is a uh, tripod mount that also comes with the remote in the same the same thing. Um, so that's not a bad deal. Um, Ed, scroll down some more. And just some more options. This is one I'd love to see in person. It's really got some great features. I just want to know if it's more of a nylon plastic or just a chintzy plastic. So that's one of my things. For 40 bucks, I would hope it's a little bit better made plastic. So. And then obviously thinking about extra batteries. Sometimes I've heard that there are some like actual holders out there made by some of the companies that make the banks. So it's both a bank and then it actually, because it attaches to the camera, it might have a tripod mount. So there might be something like out, uh, out there. I know a lot of people are doing a lot of video production on phones, um, a lot of journalists in the field and stuff like that. So that's something to definitely look at. Um, but obviously having a battery with you at all times is just worth it sometimes. Um, Anyways, I think that's the end of the list, right, Ed? I think we're actually at time, Ed. Ed, you're still muted. I know Ed? I am, I know. Okay, okay. This is how we, this is how we are. <laughs> this is how we are. <laughs> Give me a second, please. Uh, let me go into here. Uh, let me do my, I have to change something really quick. Uh, nothing. Uh, let me go here. Let me go to a different camera. I've got an overhead. Okay, so here we go. Let me just show you a few other last things. So, all right. I said about ring lights. Now, believe it or not, you don't have to break the bank. These ring lights, I will be honest with you, there's a Marshalls down the street for me, and I went in there. $9.99, $9.99, not this. So, for something like under $10, you can get yourself a great ring light. Uh, this one here, I use here all the time. I have it here off to the side, which is putting a little bit of light on me. I think it's great for $9.99. You got a little light source that has different variables on your white balance and different intensities. Now, for those of us at Santa Monica College, and if you really think that you're going to be doing videography, this is where you're gonna to have to spend a little bit of money. All right, this is, all right, this is from DGI. Uh, they are a company uh, that is very well respected and well known as what we call, I'll use the word camera stabilizers. Well, they actually make really all, they make a lot of the top line drones that everybody uses too. But, but 
this is something that you should consider owning. It is a, right now, it runs about $99 on Amazon. Uh, if it's something this stabilize it. So when you're walking around and you're shooting videos, it works absolutely smooth. That's how it works. And it's just a great thing. It also has a, I just got this by the way. That's why I haven't opened it yet. I'm sorry. I just got it. I just got it this morning, but the thing is, or yesterday morning, but the thing is, this is another tool that is important. I know that we were talking more about Snapseed, but it was kind of asked when I was asked to come in here, they were going to say to me, well, you're going to tell them about how to, you know, to do photos and things and that, like that. Yeah. But there are, let me come back live. There are some, what we call tools that you may want to consider having in your, if I use the word, not in your camera bag, but uh, carrying with you. It's like, I do carry a Joby with me. I carry these things with me when I'm out in the field shooting. Um, the lenses, uh, yes, I do. I do because I really do enjoy shooting with my smartphone. I really do. Um, I'll use the word, it makes it fun. It does, and if you use the app Snapseed, you can sit there and make the photo even look much better. Now, in that chat room, there are some handouts I'd like you to download. Uh, some of them are on composition. One of them happens to be on lighting. Um, but you know, if you ever have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me or Sean McDonald through our SMC email, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions, regardless of whatever it may be. Absolutely. Are there, are there questions or does someone want to show me some photos? I'm not ready to go unless Aaron's going to kick me out. Aaron? Oh, no, no, you still got some people. Um, I know Denise wanted to share and then I have a couple of pictures that people have sent. So Absolutely. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Help me before and afters I can share. Yeah. Denise, love it. I can't see them at my end. So Aaron, yeah, if you can release those. Yeah, let's see. Denise, um, you should have access to share your screen. Oh, it says it was disabled. Okay, let's try this again. Gail, I'll put them back up again, the links. Yes, I will. Um, we also downloaded the PDF, so we'll send it out to everybody who signed up uh, for today's session too, so you guys will get an email. Thank you very so much. So this is my before picture. Okay. Hey, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. Of course and I then do. Let me see. I'll show you my after picture. Um, sorry, one second. And there's the after with a little like, you know, Give her a round. <laughs> Dramatic lighting. <laughs> oh, love it. Thank I got you. one more I'll, I'll share with the group. Sure. Teresa Huber was trying to share one too, but I, I didn't show up. Perfect. Uh, Teresa, if you want to just email it to me or drop it in the chat and then I can go through or I can give you access to. Um, so I'll share this one. This one's by Renee Garcia. Let me know if you guys can see it. Beautiful. Renee, are you there? Yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you are, are you a believer now in uh, Snapseed? It's my niece on her third birthday. Oh my gosh. Very cute. Very nice. Very nice. Anybody else want to share one at all? All right. Any questions at all, anybody? Anything as far as the, the technical or anything like that that you may want to ask while we're here? All right. Can you think of anything else, Aaron? Are we good? I think we're good. Um, actually, I just got one more. Give me a second. Sure, sure. <laughs> Love to see it. Uh, Thank you, Judy, for joining us. I think Faye got, she got, she got the edge shot. <laughs> as long as the cat's not in the frame okay. <laughs> oh, I, want, I want the cat all right perfect okay everybody um let's see uh renee garcia all right yeah the the, the cat's not here <laughs> She's right there actually all right um i think we touched upon her but again the key is is that I'll just say this closing out is that um, just go in and experiment. That's what you need to do. You just have to experiment. And like I said, that it's it's a very simple uh, software to use. 
Uh, it's a lot of fun and you're going to see um, a big, big difference in how your images appear. Okay, everybody? And definitely, definitely, uh, Aaron uh, will send you those uh, PDFs and everything. Please, uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me, okay? All right, everybody. It was wonderful seeing you. Uh, good luck for all of us and I'm starting on Monday, okay, everyone? Thank you. I just want to give a huge shout out to Ed and Sean for hosting this workshop. I know we got to you guys kind of late. Um, so we appreciate you guys coming in and putting this together, and hopefully we can offer some more of these. Yes. So, well, thank yeah. you. Real quick, last thing. Uh, someone asked again what was the name of the software. The snap software, it's all one word. It's called Snapseed. Right. One word. S-A-N-A-P-S-E-E-D. Yes. Aaron, thank you guys for doing this for us. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Hopefully. <laughs> all of you, thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Lori, thank you for texting Ed in the middle of it. <laughs> Aaron, you can edit, edit that out. Yeah, we'll, we'll blur that part out. <laughs> With Lori. <laughs> I'll stay on if you have any questions. I'm not going anywhere. If you have any questions, I'll stay on. I have head. to roll, though. So thanks, everybody. And I'm glad we could do this for you. As far thank as you, Sean. Good team. Good teamwork. Good teamwork. Good. Let's see. All right. This was great. Ed, you have to come up with something else for next flex. Sure. I can do it. Absolutely. Yeah. I find it's fun. I love it. It's yes, so much it's fun. Awesome. I I think you had one of the biggest crowds today. I did. You had like 94 people at 94 some point. People. That was amazing. Yes. That was a great workshop. They loved it. No cats jumping through the screen because <laughs> I locked them out. But it worked. I mean, I learned a lot. Did you learn? I suck at photography and I learned a lot. Good. I'm glad. Yes. And that Snapseed thing is great. It is. It really yeah. is. Maybe I'll do a little bit. Please, and if you have any questions, please reach out to me, okay? Hey, I, I, uh, I have a quick question for you. Listen. Um, you know, Sean earlier went, went through a little demo. Was it, uh, was it a camera with all those filter options? Was he using a camera? Right, there are filters. A lot of the newer- No, I was using it. Oh, the filters themselves? Oh, that was when he was using Snapseed when he was um, creating the, the image. And those are filters that are built in that when you're doing your black and white, it's when you're tuning the image, as they call it, you can either increase your contrast, you can increase your brightness. And so, and there's also where you can bring it into where it almost looks like film. Because Correct. You know, you know, but it looks, it looks like he was trying to take a picture of a stack of books. So it seems like it was. That was through the camera. Yes, yes. Oh, camera. Yes, there are those settings depending on the platform camera you have. I see. That's as you, if you're looking at another Android or you're looking at an iPhone and you're looking at the phone features, you've got to go in. You gotcha. Got see if that has these features that you think that would be really great because then you do it through, I like saying this, I guess, through the phone camera. So awesome. you're, you're there. Well, I enjoy the class. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, Jason. Thank you for attending. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm here. Any other questions at all? I know I was, Aaron, it was like, I mean, I'm like, buy this. I buy. know. I know. I know. I, I just bought mine two, two months ago and I love it. Unbelievable. Any other questions at all? Anybody? A photography here. Pardon? I was telling Aaron, you do a lot of photography. I do. <laughs> I love it though. I and it doesn't look like what it was. Yeah. Maybe I should take one of your classes, Ed. You know what? I do have, um, I've had uh, counselors. I've had uh, professors. Um, I've had administrators. Uh, they'll take my uh, photo one class or any of the other instructors. They're all very, very good. But they'll take a photo one class. Uh, and as you know, the college loans you for free a Rebel EOS 6. Yeah. And so right then and there, and regardless if it's online or on ground, you still get a great amount of uh, wealth of information, technical. Uh, Aaron knows, Aaron was my student. 
and you you learn how to really how to create better images. Eric, yeah, he was my my photo one teacher, and then I took a lot of his uh, community education courses, so the on the street course uh, photography. Oh, nice photographer. He's very talented. Very very talented. You know he is. But yeah, you can. I've seen some of his pictures. They're He's good. He's a good photographer. And he should keep shooting, which I know he does. Yeah. You know? Anybody else at all? I'm yes. going to hang out. I'm not going to go anywhere. Uh, from Jung Lee, I am still worthwhile. I'm going to stop the recording. I just realized it's going here. <laughs> what uh, Jung says here.